Okay, so uh, as I said, this is the Squished UI Tester 6.6 .6 release webinar. I'm your host, Sarita Shpanuth. I'm a technical sales engineer at FrogLogic. And today we'll be showing you some new and exciting features from our latest Squish.6 release. Um, this webinar will go a little differently than our past webinars have been because we have added so many new features in Squish 6.6 .6 that we wanted to show you as much functionality as possible. So instead of one speaker dedicating the whole hour to one feature, we are going to rotate speakers for the new additions to 6.6. .6. Each speaker will have about 10 minutes for a demo and discussion, and then uh, some time for Q&A. Uh, today's speakers are lead engineers from our development and support teams who have worked to create the new functionality you're about to see today. Our first time block will cover scripting upgrades and enhancements, test center and squish coupling, and usability improvements that all users can benefit from. Our first speaker is Jakub Topolski, one of our in-house consultants and a squish expert who has been with FrogLogic for four years. Jakub has worked in the QA world for almost a decade and holds significant knowledge in automated testing. With that said, I'm going to pass the mic over to Jakub to kick off the webinar. Jakub? Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Sarita. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so, Let's start uh, with the Squish installation wizard, wizard, also known as Squish Setup Wizard, uh, as it, it introduced two important improvements for uh, Squish users. Okay. So first of all, uh, it's possible to select components that should be installed together with Squish. So it's possible to select if you want to install Squish IDE that is especially useful uh, when working with embedded devices on purely execution environments. Uh, and the installation wizard, wizard gives also possibility, uh, which is installing the Squish Test Center. And please note, this is not the component responsible for integration with Squish Test Center. Uh, because it's already built in in the Squish IDE, but the standalone test center installation. Uh, on the next page in the setup wizard, uh, so the next page allows selecting the default Python version. So now it's possible to select either Python 2.7 or Python 3.8. And this is a really important change since Python 2.7 is no longer maintained as of January 1st. So there is no longer need to download a Squish package with predefined Python anymore. And on top of that, on this page, you can see version numbers of all supported scripting languages. Okay. Uh, so once we have the uh, sorry the squish uh, installed, uh, let's look at some improvements introduced to the IDE. Uh, again, I'm going to to start with with Python, uh, and see, since version 6.6, uh, squish IDE is now based on PyDev 7.3. And this improves syntax highlighting and enables better support for Python 3 features. For example, here, F strings introduced in Python 3.6 are no longer highlighted as errors. But the changes uh, to scripting languages support are not limited to Python. Uh, the new Squish version introduced many improvements for JavaScript users. And you can find all of them in our knowledge base article, uh, JavaScript extensions in Squish 6.6. Uh, so now we support let declarations, uh, const declarations, or classes. Okay. But 
once we have our test suite ready, uh, we can explore another uh, new feature that many Squish users asked us uh, about. So Squish 6.6 IDE gives a possibility to select test cases for execution based on tags. Uh, so first thing we need to do uh, is to tag our test cases. Uh, so let's simply open the test suite setting. Uh, then we need to switch to test case information tab. And here we can provide tags to our test cases. Once we have our tags defined, we can select them from the tag filter here next to the test cases label. In my case, I have only one tag, which is math problems. Let's select it. And after selecting the tag, only a single test case is listed on the test cases list. And even when I run the whole test suite, only this single test case is going to be executed. Okay. Now when the test cases were executed, or maybe let's run all of them first, Uh, we can talk about the last feature I would like to show you, uh, which is integration with Squish Test Center. For those who are not familiar uh, with Test Center, uh, this is a new tool that aggregates all your test results for reporting and performs statistical analysis comp uh, comp uh, capabilities uh, of the test results. It has abilities to uh, do automatic reporting, duration tracking, traceability, uh, anywhere access, and more. It offers multiple integrations uh, to external tests and uh, requirements management tools, continuous integration servers, uh, and issue trackings and reporting platforms. Uh, the new integration is not visible by default. Uh, we need to activate it. Uh, by clicking through window menu, show view, and selecting Squish Test Center. Now, in the new view, Squish Test Center, we need to configure the connection between our IDE and Squish Test Center uh, server. So we need to open the configuration uh, dialog and then provide the details of our connection. So URL of the uh, test center uh, server, uh, login and password. Once we have the, um, the configuration set, we can go back to our test results and select upload results to Squish Test Center. In this dialog, we need to provide project name, like webinar project, batch name, uh, webinar test, and we can provide custom labels. For example, let's define uh, operating uh, system. Now, so once our uh, Configuration is ready. We can click on the Upload button, and the results are automatically sent to the test center. If we click on the link, we will see the uploaded results. Uh, and here in the Squish Test Center, we can navigate through them, inspect them, uh, and do other things we are interested in. Uh, but the integration with the center works both ways, which means we can open Squish Test Center view, se select any ex previously exported results, 
double click on it. So Squish IDE will download them from the test center server and it will allow uh, analyzing the results in the IDE. Okay, so that was the last feature I uh, prepared for you in my blog. Uh, and now, I think now we have time for our short uh, Q&A session. So please uh, feel free to use the questions sections of your GoToWebinar client uh, and I will try to, to answer them. Okay, there is a first question. I'm going to read it uh, out loud. Uh, so are there test case tags local only or can they be shared with the code in a VCS? So test tags are part of the, uh, of the test suite. And as your test suite might be stored in a version control system, you can share it with other users. Okay, uh, we have another question. Uh, is it possible to change Python version uh, later on? Uh, yes, it is possible. You can do it from the command line. Uh, another question, are the tags displayed on the suiteconf file? Uh, as far as I remember, uh, we can check it right now. Uh, they are stored in a separate file. Yes, so inside the test case directory, there is a new uh, file config.xml and this file stores the information about tags. Okay, another question. Can tags work across different suites or is it only limited to, this, to a single suite? Uh, so, which IDE supports only a single suite execution, uh, but if you run your uh, if you run your test cases from the command line, uh, you can use the same tags across multiple test suites. Okay, Jakob, thank you so much for presenting. I think for the sake of our time limitations, we'll have to move on to our next presenters. Um, our next two topics will be coming from Yaroslav Kubik. He is one of our software developers and also a lead architect of many features you know in Squish, like image-based testing, the OCR integration, and most recently, one-click remote control and cute for WebAssembly content testing. The last two topics he will cover in detail in the next two time blocks. And I'm going to pass over the mic to Yarek now. Yarek?
Hello, can you hear me now? Hello, Yarek. Yes, we are able to hear you now. Please go ahead. Oh, I was disconnected. I'm sorry. Um, yes. Uh, so, um, so I will now present the um, new feature of um, Squish, which is a support for the WebAssembly, Qt uh, for WebAssembly applications. Um, so maybe let's start with uh, what. Um, WebAssembly and Qt for WebAssembly even is because that might not be clear to uh, to all our participants. Uh, so um, the WebAssembly is just a format of new format of the files that can be uh, loaded directly into the browser and executed as code. Um, and in principle, it can be create can be compiled to from any compilable language. And the Qt uh, library makes use of that uh, of that feature to be able to load the pre-compiled pre, uh, pre Qt binaries uh, directly into the browser and execute them as web applications. So in here in this example, I have a Q quick uh, address book example application running on one part as a native application, uh, just regular Windows uh, executable. Uh, but in the background, you can see that I have also compiled the same application to the web uh, to the WebAssembly format, and I can just easily load it up into my browser uh, browser from a remote machine uh, and use it pretty much just the same. Uh, so that's not just a screenshot; that's a fully functional application. Um, and uh, testing uh, testing Qt applications, uh, which are um, embedded in the um, in the a web browser is actually quite challenging for Squish, but uh, um, it well, with a few caveats, it works quite well. Um, so right now, the Qt application, um, Qt, Qt, um, Qt binaries for WebAssembly are only um, statically linked. Uh, so for S with any statically linked Qt, uh, you have to embed um, Qt, um, Qt um, built-in hook into the application code. So uh, you can consult our manual uh, for detailed instructions on that. Um, but once this is done, you should be able to um, use Squish. Uh, uh, the easiest way to do to start such an application then is to use Squish for web, uh, which I have pre-configured here already, and uh, just start recording on the. Uh, on the target host address. And this is just a regular Squish for web. Uh, there is nothing specific to WebAssembly in the test suite or Squish configuration right now. Uh, so it will just load up the regular the website. So this is now the recording is started. And I can just record a, just a regular HTML click on address book uh, file, and then it will start the application. And then I can record some simple actions on that application. So we can just go into the edit screen, for example. And now I will stop the recording. And what we have recorded is uh, can be split into two parts. Uh, so the first part is uh, the users of Squish for Web might already know is just a regular uh, reference to a click. But then the Qt application is actually visible to Squish as a completely separate uh, context, application context, which um, which is caused by the fact that basically Qt, Qt uh, for WebAssembly and the WebAssembly platform basically bundles the entire, uh, entire stack of uh, entire library stack into the WebAssembly binary. So it is visible as a completely separate application. Um, and uh, but uh, all the objects inside, as you can see, are accessible to Squish. So we can now uh, add some weights, delays between the instruction instructions, so we can see the execution. Otherwise, it would be too quick to properly notice, especially over the remote connection. And we will see that it replays correctly the actions I have recorded. So 
So it selects now the entry I have selected. It goes to the edit screen and goes back and finishes the test suite. Yes, so um, as you can see, the uh, testing uh, with uh, testing uh, for WebAssembly applications looks pretty much to uh, the same as testing a native application. Um, for now, uh, we are only limited. For, for now, uh, we are only limited to uh, Firefox and Chrome uh, as browsers, which we support for testing uh, WebAssembly applications. But we are lo also looking into extending that um, so uh, to other browsers. Um, so if you are interested in other platforms or browsers, um, please contact us. So, are there any questions related? to our WebAssembly support. So, um, Uh, yes, so there was one question about uh, uh, whether it's required to use Squish for web um, to test to start such an application. Uh, so the there is a, there is it is also possible to use Squish for Qt, uh, but the setup there is a bit more involved at the moment. So we are still looking into making uh, streamlining it a little bit. Uh, but it generally should be possible to test at least on the local uh, system with Squish for Qt alone. Um, it might not be uh, easily possible to do on mobile browsers if that is also required. So, are there any more questions? So, um, since, uh, since I see no more questions related to the to WebAssembly support, I will now move on to the um, to um, our next uh, feature, which is a remote control uh, of the of the test uh, environment. So, uh, Squish uh, supports generally uh, rather well uh, testing on, on multiple machines or uh, on uh, testing through the network on the remote systems. So some so uh, it can be uh, systems which cannot run the full test uh, uh, squish IDE like embedded systems can be tested, or mobile platforms or uh, just to test systems that are in the other physical location, and that works quite um, that that is a very useful feature of squish, but it presents additional uh, problem which is uh, recording, especially if the same uh, the, the application cannot be run on the same system as uh, the IDE because during the recording you need to uh, interact with the application but sometimes also with with the IDE uh, like for example for adding uh, verification points and uh, um, and other um, instructions like image search and so on so even for the systems which are uh, which are in the same physical location, it still requires the user to switch between these uh, between the systems uh, physically, just which which the which device is being operated. So in order to to alleviate that problem a little bit, um, we have um, decided to uh, allow the user to to control the remote application. Uh, through the Squish IDE uh, directly. So now I have uh, I have configured our, my IDE to for uh, debugging the for uh, for testing a remote application, which in this case is the Neptune UI uh, on a remote test system. And now I can start recording. And as we can see, uh, we don't see the application because it's running on the remote system. So in order to um, 
to be able to access it, I will now activate the remote control feature. And we can see here the, the, um, the preview of the remote application. Uh, so I can click on everything uh, just as I would be clicking on, uh, on the remote system. So um, just performing some actions. And if I stop the recording, we will see that these actions were correctly recorded, just as I would be clicking then on, on the remote device. So now I can record both verifications and regular user interaction from, from the single system and using the same controls without swapping around. We can obviously also uh, see the execution of the, on the remote system if we want to. So now we restart. Oh, so I'm sorry, I have made a typo. So now the test will be restarted and the actions will be performed again. So we can preview uh, preview the remote test. Um, so to reiterate, uh, in when we are preview uh, when we are viewing the remote test, but we don't want to interact, might be useful actually to activate the um, to disable the user inputs. So that's also possible. Um, in order to do that, um, um, you can do that to avoid uh, avoid uh, um, interacting with the replaying test, which might sometimes, for example, move the cursor position or something like that, and uh, and actually interrupt the interrupt the regular flow of the test, and even lead to to some fails. Um, we can also save the uh, current snapshot a file that might be useful for reporting errors, for example. Uh, so we can save it to an image file right now. Uh, the, the, another feature of the remote control is the um, frame per second limiter, uh, which can be useful, especially if the remote device is relatively low end and uh, the remote control takes quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of um, either CPU uh, power or uh, quite a lot of bandwidth in case the device also needs uh, network bandwidth for its regular operation. Uh, so in order not to interfere that during the test, it might be useful to lower the uh, frame per second limit uh, so that the, the, inter the, the remote control itself does not interrupt or uh, interfere with the regular test flow. Um, So I will now switch back to the local. So even if the remote device, uh, so even if the tested device is not uh, in a faraway location or, uh, uh, but it's uh, uh, it's running locally like an Android device, which I also have prepared here. Uh, so I will start now the app Android. Um, it might still be useful to uh, to uh, to have a to to uh, not be forced to switch between the the UI of the different uh, of the different devices. Um, so we can, for example, zoom in since Squish is trying to pick the best size uh, for the for the reported image, but it's not always possible to to guess it correctly because the different devices report their display sizes quite often incorrectly. So we can also manually adjust the size if that's uh, that will be remembered between sessions. So you should be only forced to do that once. Um, so for devices like Android, we can type uh, also uh, um, we can type in both using the integrated. Keyboard, but we can also use the regular uh, keyboard of the PC. So it should be possible to type 
uh, using uh, regular keys, so, so uh, the key events are also forwarded. Uh, but about what about uh, the keys which are generally not found on the uh, computer keyboard, which is running the ID, uh, which is what we have on the IDE side, are the keys like a volume keys or um, or other keys available on the mobile devices, which are available in here. So you can use all of them. Uh, um, even if they are not somehow on your keyboard, of course, uh, on your, uh, and you are also not limited to testing only the application which you have started. So uh, we can just navigate outside of the application and just generally use any other application installed on the Android system or any other system that's uh, that's being tested. So we are not limited to just interacting with the application the remote, but we can just automate the entire desktop this way. So that's about it when it comes to, um, to the remote control feature. So are there, are there any questions related to that? So one question uh, is that um, uh, how much uh, how much is uh, the what is the performance impact of such a feature? Uh, so um, the performance impact there is obviously some performance impact to be expected uh, that will vary greatly between the, what the remote device actually is. So obviously the the slower devices will be impacted more. Uh, but Squish generally tries its best to to avoid impact, impacting the device too much, um, and uh, whenever possible, um, only sends the data if there is any change on the display. So it's not always possible for all the devices to to make such a detection easily. There are, on some devices, there might be a bit more impact because of that. But in general, um, we shouldn't expect too much. And as I have already explained, you can also adjust the Frame, li frame, frame rate limit to to make sure that uh, that it's not overreached and therefore limit the impact if there if 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 it's interfering with the regular test execution. Thank you, Jarek, for that excellent demonstration and presentation. Um, now I think we will move on to our next presenter. Our next topic will cover new additions to Windows application testing presented by Slobodan Vrkacevic. Slobodan is a member of our development team with a decade-long tenure at FrogLogic. He's responsible for many Windows features in the Squish GUI tester and also has expertise in embedded applications owing to his electrical engineering background. New to Squish 6.6 is added support for testing Windows Forms and WPF applications developed on Microsoft's .NET Core platform. Slobodan will discuss some important information related to these developments. With that, I will turn the mic over to Slobodan. Uh, thank you, Sarita. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I will present you another uh, new feature in Squish 6.6, and that is support for Windows applications which are running on .NET Core platform. Uh, since some of you are probably not yet familiar with .NET Core, I will first talk about, about that platform, and then we'll take a look at one practical example. So what is .NET Core? Uh, that is an open source uh, version of .NET Framework. 
and you are probably already familiar with .NET framework. That is something what people just call .NET. So it's the virtual machine or runtime uh, which executes applications which are written in C-sharp or Visual Basic. For example, Visual Studio would be one example of such application. So current plans, according to the Microsoft, is that .NET Core will replace .NET Framework in some time in the future and will become .NET 5. And because of that, we can anticipate some porting or migration problem, uh, migration uh, projects from .NET Core to .NET Framework. And because of that, it's also good to know that uh, although .NET Core is almost um, completely compatible to .NET Framework, it's not 100%. There are some uh, deprecated classes and methods which are removed from that new platform. So that's good to have that in mind for these um, porting projects. So regarding Squish, uh, we did quite some work to make it uh, look .NET Core application the same as .NET Framework applications. So you as a user should not notice that much difference. Of course, only if your application happens to use some controls which are removed and then developers uh, created some uh, replacement for them, then maybe some little changes will be needed in your test scripts as well. So let me sh show you how all of this looks in practice. Uh, what I have here is a, a simple calculator application, which comes with the standard set of WPF examples, uh, which is provided by Microsoft. One of the application is running on .NET Core platform and the other one is running on .NET Framework. As you can see, it is rather hard to say which one is which. And then uh, if you need to know that, it's usually shouldn't matter which platform, on which platform your application is running, but just in case, if you are participating in some of these porting projects and you need to know that, one tip would be to check which DLLs are loaded into the application process. And then based on the DLLs and their names or parts, then you can see and tell which application is running on .NET Core and which one is running on .NET Framework. Um, you can inspect loaded DLLs into a running process by using quite some different tools. On this machine, it happens that I have a process explorer already installed. And with that uh, free Microsoft tool, it's rather easy to inspect which DLLs are loaded into the application. For example, on the left side, I just click this process uh, and the left calculator uh, contains DLLs, which in its description has this .NET Core name or parts are starting with the .NET Core. And the other application, if we take a look, doesn't have that. It says .NET Framework or parts are starting, um, don't have .NET Core in its name. So that would be a little tip just in case you are participating in these porting projects. So how, how do you test your uh, .NET Core application in Squish? So it is the same like what you would be doing with regular Windows applications. So you can just register in your test suite, you register your application as usual, and then you can start your application from Squish in, in a usual way. And uh, you can see here that Squish is able to uh, list all objects and also to inspect the objects. You can also use the picker to pick some of the controls which are interesting for you. And for each of these controls, you will have a set of properties as usual. And also here under the native object, you will see that you will have all standard common uh, properties of that uh, class. And one more thing which I wanted to show you is that would be an example of an older test script. For example, if you uh, have a bunch of uh, old test scripts which you develop for your .NET Framework application, so just by changing the application name, uh, you can execute your old tests and you can also exec execute your new tests. So hopefully you won't uh, you won't have to do too much changes in your in your scripts. So as you can see, this is one very simple example which just checks whether one plus two is equal three, and but it works fine. The same code, the same test works fine for both applications. Yes, yeah, so that that would be 
all uh, from my side regarding this. So this will be a rather quick introduction to this .NET Core and a new feature. So I hope that will be helpful to you and that this new feature will help in your future projects. If you have some questions regarding this now, we would, I would be open for it. So uh, just give me a second to check your questions. Uh, okay, one question would be uh, where you can download this calculator example. And uh, .NET Core, same as a lot of other examples are available now on GitHub. And then you can just Google or actually let me just show you that. So uh, .NET, if you just have .NET Core WPF samples, yeah. You will get some links. Yeah, this would be the repository. And here Microsoft shared a bunch of uh, WPF examples. And I believe the example which I use is this one here under sample applications. Yeah, it's here calculator demo. And here you can also from, from the same repository, but just in another branch, you can have the same uh, examples, but just for the old .NET framework. Yes, yeah, since we don't have any other questions and we are running a little bit um, out of time, uh, I would now move this. Uh, I will now get back Mike to Sarita. Sarita. Thank you, Slobodan, uh, for that excellent presentation. Um, our last topic will detail some enhancements for Squish for Android users. We have added new support for accessing controls exposed via the Accessibility API, which improves testing applications, which are based on self-drawn widgets, like in Flutter applications, a toolkit from Google. Tomasz Pawlowski will present the enhancements. Tomasz is a computer scientist and a Squish expert. Tomasz conducts customer trainings, test development, consulting, and other services projects, engages in customer support, and maintains our Squish and CI integrations, among other things. Tomash, I'm going to pass over the mic to you very soon. Tomash, the mic is yours. Uh, thank you, Sarita, and hello, everybody. Um, so in every Squish release, we try to bring uh, new features to all Squish editions. So I'm happy to announce that uh, Squish 6.6 for Android can now access all controls exposed via the Accessibility API. So this improves uh, record and replay in many cases, for example, when testing Flutter or Qt Quick applications. So uh, let's take a look uh, into more details. So Regardless what Squish edition you are using, you can record and replay your tests using objects you can find in the application object view in the Squish IDE. Uh, so Squish for Android records and replay on the view object hierarchy. But Squish 6.6 will now replay and also record on accessibility objects from the application under test itself. So some application frameworks, such as Flutter or Qt Quick, do not use the native Android view framework uh, for their widgets, but do their own drawings. So first, uh, let me show you how Squish 653, so a recent release, would see objects in the example Flutter application. So I'm using the UI browser, which is a part of the Squish IDE. So the widgets you can see here, you can see our Flutter application. And the widget inside the uh, view are not recognized as separate widgets. So all recordings are done based on coordinates related to the view object. So now let me show you how uh, Squish 6.6 would see those objects in the same app. So let me object. Uh, let me uh, open the object snapshot that I made on the Squish 6.6. So using the, you can see already that the, the widgets itself, those tiles are now visible as separate widgets. So um, using the provided accessibility objects helps localizing those UI elements. 
So all the objects here, let me show you the structure of the Flutter application. Before that, we only could see the view, and now we can see much more objects in our application. Um, so this means that before Squish 66, all recordings would be done using coordinates on the view object, so the parent object, and this is not robust and not readable solution. So if the custom widgets are exposed via the Suite API, Squish can recognize them. This means that, for example, tap object will be performed on the custom widget. Okay, so that was a, a quite short presentation because the feature is, is really uh, simple to show. So we can now um, dive to the Q&A session. If you have any questions, I'm open to answer them. Okay, so um, yeah, there is a, a first question. It's about um, what is the newest Android version supported by uh, Squish 6.6? So uh, yeah, Squish 6.6 supports um, up to Android 10. So we here at Froglogic, we, we always follow Android releases, So, but not beta releases. So when there are some issues with the new Android version, we usually fix them in the next uh, Squish release. Okay, let's uh, wait a couple more seconds to see if there are more questions uh, regarding this new feature. Okay, if there is no question, I will now, uh, no, no more questions, I will give the presentation uh, back to Sarita. Thank you, Tomáš, for that very nice presentation. Um, this pretty much concludes today's session. Thank you, everybody, for attending today's Squish 6.6 release webinar. Uh, I want you to know that we have written some supporting blogs and tutorials on the new features that you have seen today. And also, you can expect an email from us this week uh, with this and some other important content as you dive into Squish 6.6. We will also gather the questions from each Q&A and put them together in a separate blog, which we will send out in that email. The recording of this session will be posted to our YouTube channel for on-demand viewing. And as you most of you already know, you can reach us anytime at squish at froglogic.com for any questions you might have. I want to thank you all once again for joining. Bye-bye. <laughs>